Good evening everyone and welcome to an Oz Cyclone Chasers Cyclone video update for Australia today the 9th of February 2015. My name's Chris Nitzo. This update is sponsored by our major sponsor Campbell Scientific Australia when measurements matter. On the synoptic chart this evening we've got a broken monsoon trough here. One, uh, one section of it in the Solomon Islands region and the southwest Pacific. Another section here to the north, part, north of Australia. We also have a trough in through the northwest parts of the territory. That's associated with a weak low. Now that low is the, is the system that has, has actually caused a lot of the rainfall over Queensland in the, uh, on the Friday and the Saturday. So it's sort of developed and formed here and tracked west and continues to track west now. It's a very weak system. It's expected to continue to track out here and will deepen and possibly become a tropical cyclone in the medium term, well away from WA's coastline. We'll take a brief look at the model guidance on that. But that won't be the focus of our conversation this evening. We are looking at another repeat system doing the same sort of thing as this one. However, it will become a deeper system or is expected to at least become a deeper system uh, as it tracks to the west. And so it will pose some type of threat to the coastline at some stage. We're just not sure at what stage. Is it going to pose a threat to Queensland? Is it going to pose a threat to the Northern Territory? Is it going to pose a threat to WA in the long term? Uh, it could pose a threat to all three. But at this stage, I would say we would be very surprised if it doesn't pose a threat to anyone at any stage. So we are pretty confident that this next system is going to be a stronger system. It's just a matter of where its strength will develop. Where it, Will it develop here, here, or more likely here? For the past week, there's no prizes at guessing where the real weather has been, and it's been all over here in the northeastern parts of Queensland. Uh, a notable mention also was the amount of storm activity that was occurring over the inland Pilbara and Gascoigne. Fairly unseasonal. The amount of rain that was coming out of it was unseasonal, at least. Uh, not so much the lightning activity from it, but certainly the rainfall totals, accumulated rainfall totals out here, 50 to 100 mils in places that average only three or 400 a year, is quite a significant fall especially considering it's not attached to the monsoon or a tropical cyclone. But let's zoom into the Queensland region here, and if we look at the far northeastern parts of Queensland, we had over 400 millimetres in the past week, places up to half a metre there around the Cairns and just south of Cairns area. So very much a active weather situation there. Most of that fell on the Friday and Saturday. And if we look at the Saturday into Sunday uh, rainfall, so this is all the rain that happened on the Saturday. You can see here two to three hundred millimetres in a fairly uh, fairly distinct track of coastline there uh, in around the Cairns region. Didn't extend too far to the south. We were a bit surprised that the Cardwell and uh, Ingham area didn't cop anywhere near as much as we thought. We were thinking that at that stage probably about a hundred mils would be uh, the going value for that region so it was very localized in terms of those heavier falls but the other good thing about it was we actually saw a little bit of a weak low develop a little little weak circulation and it kept tracking west here and with it it kept bringing that rainfall west with it and so we had a lot of places on the Atherton Tablelands even further west towards Chilligo that saw some very good rainfall from that particular system. All right, enough about the past. Let's look to the future. The tropical cyclone outlook for the Coral Sea doesn't have much in terms of cyclone potential, but it does mention that the monsoon trough is expected to become active across the northwest Coral Sea later this week. The situation will be closely monitored over the coming days. Now, that's what we're talking about. We're talking about a weak low pressure system developing in the far northwestern Coral Sea. That will need to be watched. The Tropical Cyclone Outlook from the Northern Territory says there's nothing going on, and I think that's a little bit misleading, but I guess in terms of the technicalities of the outlook, uh, the next three days, yes, there will be very little going on in that region, but there probably should be some mention about what should be happening or what's expected to happen over the weekend and into early next week. Now, the WA Bureau aren't talking about the next one yet, but they are talking about the one that's off the coast of Darwin or near the coast of Darwin. There is a possibility that the ratings could increase towards this weekend. The models generally agree on a tropical low forming around Christmas Island. The tropical low is likely to move westward, so it's not going to go towards the coastline. It's expected to continue moving away from WA, but there are computer models out there showing this becoming a cyclone. So let's have a look at some of those. 
Thanks to WeatherZone for these uh, public charts, we can see the uh, the computer model, the Access G. This is the Bureau of Meteorology's actual computer model, and we can see there's not much happening there. The, there is a low; it's not really showing up on this chart. There is a low right, pretty well over the top of Darwin at the moment. Now, as we go into next, as we go into tomorrow, we can see just a, a little bit of a jumble of the isobars here. In there somewhere will be an embedded low pressure system. As we go to 48 hours, we see that area of disturbed weather continue to push westwards. As we go to 72 hours, we see that the low has started to form there. By day four, we're starting to see a low pressure system deepening. And day five, we see significant deepening of it. And by day six, it's likely to be a weak tropical cyclone located a long way off the WA coast. So that's enough time on that one. I'll just show you actually just briefly a couple of other computer models that completely agree with this particular scenario. So here's that same time frame on the GFS forecast model. We can see that the GFS is also expecting this low to deepen out to days five and six. The UK, the UK MET model has significant deepening of this system into a tropical cyclone by day five and six. Once again, remembering of course that the track remains well offshore off WA's coastline. The Canadian CMC model also has a tropical cyclone developing, but a little bit closer to the coast, but still well offshore and really with a big high underneath it, not expecting that one to push back to the southeast towards the coast. The Navgem not really interested in any way, and the European is only mildly interested in developing the low as it tracks a little bit more northwards to the west as opposed to the southwest which is what the other models do with it. So, folks, that's enough time on that one. Uh, if it does start to pose a threat to Christmas Island, we will start to update you a little bit more on that. But let's talk about the system of interest to most of us. So, what we're about to see is a fairly active phase of the monsoon just to the north and now it's a fairly localized feature it's not going to be an active phase of the monsoon region wide it's very localized to the northwest coral sea and what we're going to see here are probably two distinct low pressure systems very weak systems expected to develop in the next couple of, or the next five days or so the first one is expected to develop somewhere in here around the northwest coral sea the second one somewhere up here in the solomon sea now there might be a little bit of an interaction in between these two systems uh, but we do expect that the the more dominant system will become this one in the northwest coral sea so it is probably going to track a little bit to the southeast before the ridge takes hold of it and tracks it out here to the west now at this stage we're expecting a long westward track there seems to be a fairly strong ridge in place here over central australia and we'll talk about the mid-level ridging very shortly but in general we're expecting to see a south to southeast track and then followed by a west southwest and then basically a westerly track a uh, fairly long track of the system. Now there is a little bit of conjecture there and there is a little bit of model doubt as to whether we will see this we long westerly track. If we do see this long westerly track we're expecting to see and I won't, I won't shy away from it, we are expecting to see a tropical cyclone develop off the coast of WA if we see that long westward track. Uh, the conditions just seem to be too ripe to, uh, to try and play and mince our words. There is going to be, or very likely to be, a tropical cyclone located off the northern coastline of the Western Australian region if we see this long westward track adopted. Some keen eyes might also note that we have a, uh, a bit of a low pressure region here. Look, that is going to track a little bit to the west, but we're not expecting it to come anywhere near Queensland and shouldn't pose a threat to us. Really what we're after and what we're looking at over the next five to six days is this region here. And what we're expecting, as I mentioned, that southeast and then that westward track. So that was the GFS. This is the European take. So in the European, we can see that it has made this Northwest Coral Sea system the dominant feature. It is only a weak to moderate tropical low, so it's not something that the Euro is, is developing into a tropical cyclone very quickly at all. Uh, but it is about to hit the North Peninsula around the Lockhart River area, and then it's going to track west into the Gulf of Carpentaria. If it does that, it might have the conditions necessary for it to intensify. Uh, whether or not it can make cyclone status before hitting the NT, we're not quite sure. But as I mentioned, in the long term, if it continues on its track to the west, we would expect to see a tropical cyclone form off, northern, off the northern parts of WA. Now, on the UK MET forecast model, we can see that it is struggling. It is really struggling between which of these features will be dominant. So you can see here's our low in the northwest Coral Sea. Here's our low from the Solomon Islands, or the Solomon Sea, I should say. 
and you can see they're starting to interact with each other and the interaction here is likely to go uh, the way of or the in favor of this big a stronger low in the northwest coral sea which will mean that this little solomon's low will slingshot around it um, and possibly make landfall on the north tropical coast a lot further south than the dominant low the dominant low will adopt a more westward or slow westward track which is the expectation at the moment from all computer forecast models but it is very going to be very interesting to see if there is going to be some sort of interaction between these two systems as i mentioned the computer models are toing and froing they are making this the dominant circulation in all of them however they are toing and froing as to what to do with this little solomon system low uh, whether it'll push westwards if it does push westwards and make landfall a little bit further to the south we might see some heavier falls of rain a little bit further south on the queensland coast whereas if we only see the dominant feature which is this one here we would expect to see uh, the heavy rain pretty well anywhere on its track and to the south maybe to about uh, cardwell or so but anywhere further south than that would see minimal impact from a tropical low hitting the coast up that far north. So if we look at the spaghetti model plots from the GFS forecast ensemble, this is the latest ensemble, but it's pretty well uh, very, been very similar now for a few runs. So we can see here that by next Sunday, the low pressure system probably going to be located either on the West Peninsula or into the Gulf of Carpentaria. By next Monday, the general consensus is once again, by that stage, we are expecting it to be in the Gulf of Carpentaria. As we get to Tuesday, we're expecting to see the low or tropical cyclone, probably uh, getting quite close to tropical cyclone intensity out here in the western half of the Gulf. Now, whether it's getting too far to the south and, and starting to hit the southern Gulf Coast, not quite sure, or whether it'll remain a little bit further to the north, at this stage, far too early to tell. But this could be a, uh, a tropical cyclone by next Tuesday on the GFS forecast ensemble. Now there is a little interesting offshoot on the GFS forecast ensemble. So while we're looking at the main event, which is this low here now starting to track into the Northern Territory, there is a little bit of an offshoot on the, some of the computer model guidance on the GFS and also, believe it or not, on the European, where we could see a little weak low spin off here off the coast of Cairns too. It's a little sneaky one here uh, where, where we're not expecting it. So uh, while we're all watching the main event, which is going to be heading towards the Northern Territory, uh, this little cheeky little low here might get, get itself going as we head into the mid next week. So we'll, have a, we'll, we'll obviously have to keep an eye on that to see whether that signal strengthens over the next few days. Then as we get to day 10, the GFS forecast ensemble still has that little sneaky little low right on the coast here between Cairns and Townsville, but of most interest is this area here. It's predicted by a vast majority of the GFS forecast ensemble members. We could actually start to see it now pushing offshore. Now the longer term GFS is riddled with errors, but we do see uh, in the long term GFS a tropical cyclone expected off the northern parts of WA. So let's take a look at the steering mechanisms for this particular tropical low that's going to develop sometime on the weekend or later this week. We can see that over Queensland we have in play here over the Coral Sea, uh, that's typical isn't it, an upper level trough which would try to drag anything that developed in the Coral Sea away from Queensland. But what we're also seeing is the development of a fairly strong mid to upper level high located over central parts of Australia. Now, if the system strengthens too fast uh, and too, uh, too quickly and too far to the east, uh, we would push away to the southeast. But none of the computer models are showing that happening. And the Solomon's low that pushes southwards, if it pushes southwards and if it even forms, uh, is expected to remain very weak anyway. So this upper trough shouldn't impact it whatsoever. But... The initial track of that tropical low here in the northwest coral sea is expected to be a southeastward one, but only for a very short period of time before this ridge comes in and steals uh, the system back or, or grabs the system and yanks it back here to the west. As we go here to Sunday, we can see the upper level trough is still in play here over the Coral Sea, but still uh, going to be too far probably, probably, I'll say probably because I never know in the Coral Sea, is going to be too far away from the low which should be located on Sunday somewhere in this region and so therefore we would be expecting to see the low pressure system under the influence of now the mid-level high which is really starting to push into Queensland and therefore adopt this westerly track.
as we get into, say, next Tuesday, we're going to continue to see this upper-level ridge right in play here throughout the, uh, throughout the continent uh, and really extending it even as far east as, as basically eastern Queensland. So anything located on the northeast, e uh, sorry, the northeast, uh, the, the north, the northwest is just going to be pushed way out here to the west. So there's almost very little doubt here about the track of this system. As long as the Coral Sea doesn't throw up any surprises, once it hits the Queensland coast, we expect it to be a long track westward moving system, and then we do expect it to become a tropical cyclone off the WA coastline should it adopt that long westward track. So over the next week, the Bureau of Meteorology computer forecast models put together show us very heavy rainfall anywhere to the north of around Cardwell is around about the area of delineation between those those really heavy falls and those really light falls. So anywhere north of that, you're in for a fairly decent treat of weather over the next week. Now, we're going to see a lot of that heavy rain not really showing up on this computer model just yet, but you'll start to see it come in tomorrow where we'll start to see more blues and purples starting to creep into the northeast parts of the Territory as well. And then as we get into a couple of days' time, we'll start to see those blues and purples getting into the northwestern parts of the Territory. And then eventually we'll see as that track of the system is expected to continue to push westwards, uh, we would expect to see uh, heavy rainfall pushing into the Northern Territory and then possibly the Northern parts of WA. Righto, folks, if you want to know more, please become an Oz Cyclone Chasers subscriber on our website, ozcyclonechasers.com.au, and we'll go into detail in tomorrow morning's update about Queensland, the sorts of weather conditions we can expect here on the northeast coast, which will be the particular emphasis. And then for the Northern Territory, we'll start talking about the medium-term weather conditions as this low tracks to the west or is expected to track towards the west. And we'll also then talk in the WA update about about the long-term cyclone potential and landfall cyclone potential of that particular system. Thanks for watching this update, folks. We'll have another one for you Thursday night, probably about 9 to 9.30 p.m. Queensland time. So join us then. Enjoy the rest of your working week.